deep brain stimulation has been available in this country since about the mid to late 90s. The indications for deep brain stimulation currently in the U.S. are uh, essential tremor, which is an action tremor, so patients that are trying to use their hands or arms, when they try to actually use it, they shake and they can't control coffee cups, they can't eat, they can't write their name. We also do the procedure for Parkinson's disease, which is a degenerative brain disease, as many people know. Uh, and that uh, is a second indication. The third indication that we do DBS for uh, is dystonia, which is a type of muscle contraction disorder. Uh, also, the surgery is very effective for that. Uh, the way that we do our procedures, we generally do them awake. Uh, and the reason we do them awake is that we like to stimulate. And what that means is that we put tiny microelectrodes down to the target area, and we'll usually put in three at a time and then we will stimulate and record through those electrodes looking for the best response for the patient's symptoms and minimal side effects. And once we determine which of those trajectories is the optimal one, we remove the microelectrodes and we place the permanent electrode in. And then we do some additional stimulation, again, to confirm good effect and no or minimal side effect. Uh, one of the new exciting things we're doing here at Mayo Clinic with our DBS program is we're using segmented leads. Biggest advantage right now of the segmented lead is the ability to be able to uh, have an asymmetric current that allows you to stimulate at the precise spot you want to stimulate, but only stimulate the part at that location you want to stimulate. So I can stimulate laterally and get great response, but I don't have to stimulate medially and stimulate a structure that gives a patient side effects we don't want. Whereas before, you sort of had to accept great tremor control and I got to accept some side effect because in order to get great tremor control, you gotta, you're, you're getting a little negative st um, stimulation on the other side of the cylindrical lead. The segmented lead is a great advance for that. Most patients actually tolerate the procedure very well despite the fact that it's awake, they're being asked questions, they're being asked to do certain activities so that we can test them. The device, once it's implanted, is then connected to a, a power pack or a battery something similar to this. It goes underneath the collarbone and the entire system's underneath the skin that's all implanted. And that's how it's programmed and it's programmed with an iPad. Uh, it's programmed can be several feet away. Uh, and in fact, when new programming treatment options come up, it can be downloaded to their device like an iPhone. So the technology uh, is really getting better and better. The results have been excellent in almost all patients. Um, most patients that come back in for their programming are extremely pleased with how they're doing, um, turns their lives around in many instances. Um, it is, it is a, a difficult sometimes for patients to go through this because uh, they have a, some of them have a progressive disease and uh, you know they've been through a lot and it's, it's, it can be a little rough on them but once you come out the other side after the procedure's done and they've recovered, uh, I have not had any patients so far said they wish they didn't do it. So it's a very rewarding surgical a procedure to, to do and to be able to offer to patients. So it's a very exciting time for this field. Uh, it continues to grow dramatically and uh, I think that Mayo Clinic is on the forefront in terms both of, of uh, participating in trials and, ex and experimental uh, uh, trials uh, in terms of volume of patients that uh, we are able to do uh, at all three of our sites. So it's a very exciting time for deep brain stimulation.